the Battlefield 1 beta is over. Unfortunately, we can't play that game anymore until it is released. Although saying that, there is a slight chance that there will be an extended beta over the coming days for a select few people. Now, whether you enjoyed the beta or not, or in fact, whether you enjoyed the alpha or not, the Battlefield 1 hype train is still flying along and people are really looking forward to see what the full game has to offer. Now this video is going to focus on the maps that we can expect to see in the vanilla portion of the game. When it comes to DLC I've got a couple of theories myself and bringing in a few other theories and leaks from other sources will be able to come up with a pretty good idea of what to expect when the full game comes out. Now so far we know we're going to get St Quentin Scar the map that we saw in the alpha and Senai Desert, the map that we saw in the beta. They might be tweaked a little bit, but to be honest, I think they're gonna be pretty similar to what we saw over the last few weeks. Now, in regards to the other vanilla maps, I did make a video a couple of months back looking at the, the maps that were listed on the battlefield.com website. Now, taking a quick look back at those, we can expect, obviously, St. Quentin Scar, Sinai Desert, Armions, Monte Grappa, and Empire's Edge. Now, if you want to look at those maps in a little more detail, there'll be a link on screen now taking you back to that video, and I do look at where these places are and what can be expected with those maps. So the four additional maps that we can expect to see in the vanilla game mode will be Suez Canal, Foul Fortress, Domaine de Chantilly, and Argonne Forest. Apologies for any pronunciations there, but you'll get the idea. We're expecting four additional maps. Now let's start with the Suez Canal. The canal is located in Egypt and connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. I've got a map on screen now just to show you what I'm talking about. We're looking at northern Africa and we're looking at a similar topography to what we saw in Sinai Desert. I'm not saying it's going to be exactly the same, but we will be expecting sand and that same sort of deserty gameplay. Now some history behind the actual canal itself. Obviously with it being of such tactical importance to Britain, the Turks and the Germans wanted control of it. So they led an expedition in January 1915 to gain control of this canal. The force of around 25,000 men, the basic aim of it was to suppress the British and seize control of the canal. In order to get to the canal though, the Turks had to cross the Sinai Desert, the map that we saw in the beta, and as you know from that, even though it is just part of a game, it is a vast expanse of land. I've also got a cinematic on my channel showing how large the map actually is, so possibly these maps would connect together in part of the campaign. That's my trail of thought behind that. In order to get across the desert, they would have to walk, and with the troops that they had, this was going to be incredibly difficult. Now, when the Turkish troops got close enough to the canal, they had to try and take it, and their surprise attack wasn't really that surprising. And when crossing the canal, only three of the pontoons and their crews managed to get across, and then they were quickly killed or captured. A series of attacks followed during the day, but nothing really was successful. And then, the following day, they did end up retreating. Now, the Brits managed to see off the attack, and wouldn't again fight the Turks until they met in the Sinai Desert at the Battle of Romani, and I'm guessing that's what we'll probably see in the campaign, the defense of Suez, and then possibly uh, the Battle of Romani as well, using the Sinai Desert map that we saw in the beta as part of the campaign. Now, the Suez Canal obviously is going to give us a lot of different gameplay. We're going to see the same sort of stuff that we saw in the Sinai Desert, but also we've got a canal, and that means that we're going to have watercraft going up and down there. I'm not really too sure what they're going to put in there, but it could be very interesting. We also got a screenshot as well that's going to be put on screen now. It shows you a, uh, a land ship attacking a flag or a point, and it shows you the canal in front. You can see the water, so it's definitely going to be quite an interesting map, that is for sure. Now the second map that I'd like to take a look at is the Forest of Argon or Argon Forest. Again, if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, I apologize. Now the forest was located in France and got a map on screen just to show you exactly where I mean. Now this battle itself took place along the Western Front and involved the Allied Powers, Associated Powers and the Central Powers, so the French, the USA and the German Empire. Now it'll be interesting to see whether they actually include the French in the vanilla part of the, the game because from what I'm what I've heard and the rumors going around, the French are actually going to be part of a DLC instead of being part of the vanilla game mode. But again, we'll have to wait for the full game to see see what actually happens there. But it might just be a US or Associated Powers versus Central Powers on that map. Now, the casualties in this battle were absolutely huge. The Americans recorded a total of 117,000 casualties, while the French lost 70,000 men and the Germans lost 100,000 soldiers. Now, a fact about this battle was that it was known for the Lost Battalion, a group of 500 soldiers of the 77th Division who fought a brave battle between Bois de Priamont 
and Charlevaux against impossible odds and only about 200 of them survived the battle. Now this was a major battle in the First World War and we saw again in the trailer some soldiers walking through the forest. I'm going to put that up on screen now. Quite an interesting part of the trailer I personally thought and again that's the sort of gameplay that we can be expecting. I think this will be a really really good infantry map and the sort of map that we should have got in the beta. The Sinai Desert map didn't really offer the sort of infantry that I wanted to see in Battlefield 1 so I am looking forward to this one. Now the next map I'd like to look at is Foul Fortress, or in fact it might be known as the Battle of Foul Fortress. Located in the town of Alfar, a small port on the Alfar Peninsula in Iraq, this consisted of a battle where the British forces successfully took the fort on November 8th, 1914. Now the reason for the battle was a simple fact that the British needed to protect their oil facility and it was being endangered of course with the war and it was not by no means an easy task. The British troops arrived and it was a heavily guarded fortress and the Brits didn't have any artillery support as well. So this led to a, a lot of trenches being dug and then a slow battle over the course of the next coming days trying to get and shoot back and actually get to the fortress itself. As soon as the artillery arrived, the Brits then took advantage. And for me, I think this is going to compare to the Battlefield 4 map, Gulf of Omen. Now, with the Brits landing on the beach and then having to get up to the fort itself, I think it will be that sort of gameplay. Possibly something a little bit different, but we're definitely going to be seeing soldiers coming from the water up to the fort. Maybe a really nice rush map, that one. Not too sure how they're going to, to go about it, but it could be very nice indeed. Now, the next map I'd like to look at is Chateau. This is the leak name of the map, and the screenshot itself, as you can see, shows... A, a shot of the Demand de Chantilly, again apologies for the pronunciations. Now as far as I'm aware, as, as far as I've been able to research, this was the French headquarters between 1914 and 1917. At some point during the war the Germans actually reached Chantilly but retreated shortly after. Nevertheless, even though there wasn't really a battle, it still means that the Germans were there so we could have some sort of battle there maybe something a little far from the truth but it doesn't really matter the map looks absolutely brilliant dice could be getting a little bit creative here but but nevertheless we could definitely see a really really nice map with close quarters engagements and as you can see from the screenshot we've got planes and we have vehicles on the ground this is possibly the map that I'm looking forward to the most, but again, it leaves me a little bit confused because the French are obviously supposed to be in this map, so possibly is, are the French going to be involved in the full game? I'm not really too sure. Now, another really interesting point to note was brought up by a fellow content creator. It goes by the name of Flackfire. You've probably heard of him before. If not, I definitely suggest you check out his channel. It will be linked in the description down below. Now, on the Sinai Desert map, he found a map located in the... British base on one of the tables. Again, you can see it in the rush game modes if you were to go and have a look. And it shows part of Belgium, very clearly shows in fact part of Belgium. And this brings up the subject of DLCs. I'm pretty certain that they're going to bring some maps located in Belgium in for the DLCs. It'll be interesting to see what they actually do. But again, we could be seeing some more stuff from that. I don't think it's going to be in the vanilla game mode itself, but it's quite interesting to see that they've already put in some little Easter eggs like that for us to go and have a look at and then maybe speculate to what we can expect in the future. Hopefully you enjoyed this little look at the maps that we can expect to see in Battlefield 1. Again, I'm not saying I'm an expert on any of this, but it was quite interesting to have a little bit of research and look at some of the maps, because obviously they link back to things in history, and of course that's quite a nice thing to look at if you have an interest in this sort of stuff. Again, I'm going to leave Flackfire's channel down below as well, as we spoke about him earlier. Definitely go and check him out if you're interested in the historical side of the battlefield, because he is a brilliant, brilliant content creator for this sort of stuff. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.